What is up, Risk Takers? Welcome to the Kill Pete Strategy. I am Pete. I am a top player in the game of Risk Global Domination. I have a daily release schedule on YouTube, and I stream on Twitch Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 12 noon Toronto time. If you are interested in getting better at the game of Risk, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and come along the ride with me. If you are able to support me on Patreon and help me continue this work, I would be most grateful. Join my discords and get notifications when I go live on Twitch. And catch the next stream. And for today's episode of Waiting on Your Best Behavior, we have a new friend of mine, Von Agarwal, uh, a show a couple weeks in the making now, and I've been very excited to talk to you, so welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Pete. I'm, I'm also very excited to be here. Great. Also a bit nervous, no. I'm, I'm going to be honest. But <laughs> Little old me? Come on. going to be great. I got. I. I, mean, I I'm the least scary you're, guy. You're a pretty big deal now, Pete. No, no, I mean. none of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I'm but a man playing video games in his bedroom. Come on. Ah, uh, me too. Me too. Yep. Right. So tell us about yourself. Why don't we do a quick bio? You are an Austrian. I am. I am. Okay, I am. but you fly it's the flag of Morocco. Yeah, yeah, I do. It's nothing. Special, really. I just, I just really, uh, really liked the, really liked the, how the red contrasts with my usual purple. So, also the star is nice. It's just very aesthetically pleasing, I would say. All right. So, similar reason to why I chose my flag, you chose yours. Yeah. And you're, yeah. and you're a young man, in school. I am, eighteen years old. I okay. am still in school. Yeah. I never would have guessed um, from our conversations that you were eighteen. So. <laughs> Good on you, sir. Well, I, I, I'll take that as a compliment. As I meant it. Yeah, I um, I will finish school um, this year. Mm -hmm. And then I will probably go and study. But maybe I won't. I, I'm honestly not really sure yet. Well, what are you studying? Well, I'm, I'm thinking about a couple of things. First of all, it would be really interesting to study psychology. Mm -hmm. Also, mainly because um, that's that's kind of my. Uh, well, both my parents are psychologists, so it's it's kind of um, in the lineage, I would say. Okay. So sure, I, I might do that, but I might also not, because you know. I'm not. I'm not really sure if studying is the right thing for me, so I'm trying to figure that out before. <laughs> okay, so if not more school, then what would it be? Well, um, probably just get a job, a pretty, pretty normal job. But, um, Ah, gentlemen, it's, it's, look it's, at you. No! Ah, you motherfucker! Get the- <laughs> get fucked. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They're not sorry, I'm gonna smash the shit out of you. Um... <laughs> why, why would you want to do that? Because I'm a bad man. Well, okay, so everyone says pretty normal job, but, like, you have to understand I'm... I'm not from Austria, so what does a normal job mean for you? Well, um... Just uh, work until I can afford to. Uh, basically, I, I, my dream is to travel and and to experience new cultures. To to go basically on a year where you we ha in German we have something called a a Auslandsjahr or a gap year. I think it's what yep. it's called in English. Yep. So. Um, I would love to do that in, in in like South American country would be probably the coolest. I would like to experience that. And it, it's such a different culture, so alien to to me. And yeah, but I don't have the money for it, so I kind of need to work at a job, at any job really. To well, the good thing about enough. South America is it it is fairly cheap. Um, yeah, I, I yeah. actually visited for the first time in the spring, and you know oh, your mo your money goes a long way. Yeah, I went to uh, I went to Colombia. Colombia, very cool. Very it good. was it was very cool. I was in Argentina only once, but it was 
very an eye-opening experience, so to say. Totally. Yeah, and where else? Was, where else have you been having your eye on as far as travel? Well, uh, everything that is different from Austria, because <laughs> Austria isn't a bad country, but it is very, well, I would say. Um, very cold in a in a in a interpersonal sense so um it's just people when i when i visited south america people were so were so open so nice so friendly and it was so um so very different from what i'm used to which is not to say that germans can't be nice and friendly or austrians can't be nice and friendly but it's just it's a it's a bit of a different experience and i really enjoyed that yeah and yeah, yeah. well i i noticed so, the same thing about canada it's a lot of parallels to what you're talking about that's that's interesting because the cultures of canada and austria there seem to be some parallels yeah i would say i don't know austria very well but i do have a fair fairly well-developed sense of uh, the German stereotype in my head. Yeah, there isn't a whole lot of difference, to be quite honest. Yeah, I would, have, I would imagine so. Canadians are smug. Yeah. That's the, the biggest thing I would smug say. Smug to not be American. <laughs> um, not just that. Not just that. We're... <laughs> yeah, you know what? Maybe, maybe the juxtaposition. We... As Canadians are so interested to have an identity that is not American, that we really pay a lot of attention to the differences. Where, whereas it's likely that Canada and the United States are almost as similar as two countries can possibly be. I've, I've, I, I like to watch a Canadian YouTuber who talks about a lot about those stuff. Maybe you know him. He is. I, I don't completely know how to pronounce his name but it's uh he's called jj mccullough or something like that okay so he's a canadian youtuber he talks uh, a lot about politics about uh, cultures and, and stuff like that and he's always uh sad about about his own country that they are fairly fairly um that it's fairly important to not be American, to... Oh, dude, we love the smell of our own farts up here. It's hilarious. Like, Canadians yeah. Canadians are, are shocked when it becomes apparent that maybe we don't live in the best country in the world. <laughs> it's kind of I, I, would, I, I would just like to say that I watch them, too. Uh, I, I've uh, watched uh, some of his videos in the past. Oh, that's and, really cool. Yeah, I, I I know what you're talking about. Well, we got a Parlox cameo too. Parlox is, is joining <laughs> us uh, yes. for this interview. Did you have something yeah. uh, you were curious about to to ask Athens, Parlox? Maybe you can lead into the the questions. Um, well, there's one thing that comes to mind. Um, sure. It might it might seem a little weird, but I think it's mostly because uh, you know me being Jewish from Israel, uh, and and you know Austria. Uh, it's yeah, some, yeah. Uh, we have a, an interesting relationship. Yeah, uh, we do. We do. So uh, I wanted to ask: um, Do you treat uh, Hitler historically as an Austrian person or a German person, like in practicality? Um, that's. That's a difficult question. But because quite an opener, Parallax. Holy, we went we went right to Hitler. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So, so it depends on who who you ask. So, um, a lot of a lot of Austrians like to think that Hitler was uh, German, and which they know he wasn't, but. Um, they like to put the blame on Germany and, well, to, uh, part of the blame is on Germany, but it, it isn't really the whole story. So what many people seem to miss is that Austria was actually a fascist country before Hitler and before, uh, the, uh, before the Nazis took over 
before Anschluss. And yeah. So just uh, just so folks who are following along know, Anschluss is the term um, for the annexation of Austria by Nazi Germany um, just before World War II. Yeah, exactly. So pe many people in Austria like to point at that and say, "Yeah, we we actually we didn't want that. We we um, we're completely innocent. It was all just the Germans who took over." But to be quite honest, that isn't really the truth. So um, I think in school we do learn that Hitler was an Austrian and that. Um, oh. that we are <laughs> at fault and that this could happen again. We have a lot of very intense um, discussions about that topic. We, our whole history class is basically World War One, and we are talking about how to, well, how to prevent such a such a thing from happening again. Basically. Um, Pete uh, sent the video about mass formations in the chat. And I can so, post, I'll post that video in, uh, in the show notes as well, because I think a lot of people, I had heard the term for the first time, mass formation. Um, and I yeah. think a lot of people would get a lot out of watching this. Yeah, I actually, I didn't know the term either, but we do learn a lot about it in Germany. We have films, we have, we have old people come over who are, as survivors of, of the Nazi regime. Um, well, not anymore, but back in the day when I was in first grade or, you know, in primary school, we had those people. Um, and... it, it happens in Israel too. We have uh, Jewish survivors, but I bet the perspective is very different, right? Yeah, um, yeah. For sure, for sure. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think the never again sentiment is, is the loudest thing I keep hearing. Yeah. The thing is, people are talking about that a lot, but it isn't... <laughs> what we practice? Many people, yeah, they, they preach it, but they don't really practice it, so... Wait a minute, do you mean yeah. to tell me human beings are hypocrites? <laughs> <laughs> and no way, never, never. Yeah, never, no, of course, perfect, of course so, not. So yeah. That wouldn't happen, no, no. So, hmm. yeah, um, for example, the COVID, the whole COVID situation, so. Oh yeah, that's a fun one. Austria was, was actually one of the very few European countries who had a vaccination mandate for a couple months, mm -hmm. where we were forced to go and vaccinate, which isn't really a bad thing that I don't think the vaccination is a bad thing, but I do think that the mandate was a very bad thing, so... Why? Because, you know, um, it is my body and I, I want to be able to do... Um, it is my right to, to exercise control over my body. Finally, you got me. I didn't have a set of... <laughs> I saw normal. that. Yeah, GG, dude. GG. <laughs> Yeah, so, so in here? What do you think? Me? I think he does. Yeah, I'm dead. Right. <laughs> oh, me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean I got the I got the two the two territory plus three, so this is my game to lose now. Yeah, it, it looks like it looks like you did you did play that quite well. Okay. Well it's easy when you're gifted a bonus. <laughs> I actually got those settings from Baldwin, so... Ah, Baldwin I, settings. I cool, cool, cool. Right on. Yeah, yeah. He's great. Someone said really, to me, really uh, like Baldwin sounds like Sean Connery, and now it's like I can't unhear it. <laughs> I think I'm too young for that, but... You never you, you never watched any, any movies with Sean Connery? Uh, maybe. Give me, give me a movie. Like, he was James Bond... He was in my personal all-time favorite movie, um, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Okay, so I, I, I have watched James Bond, but uh, I think I've only watched the new movies with, um, what's his name? 
uh, Tom Cruise or something? No, was it? Uh, Daniel Craig, I think, is the current James Daniel Bond. Daniel Craig, right, right, yeah. yeah. How do I hold I'm here? Very, I'm very uncultured. I oh, think you, don't. you only have 18 years with which to read and, and watch and learn, so... Yeah, I love to read, but I'm not really much of a movie guy, to be honest. Fair enough. Neither am I. Not anymore, at least. Uh, yeah, and also uh, Daniel Craig looks like my uncle, so that's that's really <laughs> the thing, the main thing why I got into James Bond back in the day. Because yeah, I don't know. Okay. All right, so let's let's linger let's linger on um, where we were. So you don't believe in vaccine mandates because you believe in personal bodily autonomy. Yes. Okay. I that's that was the word. I couldn't. I couldn't find it. I'm sorry. No, it's uh, no worries. So that that question then jumps out to me as, um, what about things like the mumps or you know things that the the normal childhood vaccines that we all get. So well, there is a uh, first big difference is um the. Those vaccines are quite old, so we have been developing them for a while. We have been using them successfully for a while. So we know that they work, first of all. Mm -hmm. And we also know that there aren't any significant um, side effects. There are surely side effects, but they are uh, balanced out by the benefits, I would say. So you're not in favor of um, massive experimentation taking place across the general public. Uh, no, I would say <laughs> I am not. Well, good. Because... So I, I think we can we can easily agree there. Yeah, it was it was a very hasty uh, development. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I still don't think that there are any major side effects, at least from what I've heard. But that it, it also didn't work very well. So I mean, <laughs> I'm vaccinated. I had COVID. I, many of my people, or basically everyone in my class, was vaccinated and got COVID. So it just didn't really work very well, right? From my perspective, right. So it wasn't a solution so much as a distraction. Yeah. Right. Well, I was extremely distracted for two years. And here we are. And life seems to be returning mostly to normal, which I have to say I'm beyond relieved to see. Yeah, I'm going to hope that we don't get another COVID. That would be pretty bad. But... Well, one thing that was made abundantly obvious from my perspective was that people are a lot easier to control than I had expected. Would you I'm say actually not really you don't agree? surprised by that because okay. that was you see it as obvious. I mean, um, yeah, but the reason why I do is because in in school we we learned a lot about how to how these mass formations in context with um, Nazism came to be and how this absolutely could happen again. Right. So. Well, that was news to me. So. Unfortunately, I, I've now learned the hard way that almost everyone is either dumber than me or more gullible or both, which is a bit of an arrogant way to put it. But when I see folks driving around in their car alone with a mask on, it really makes me wonder what rationality led them to that decision. I don't think it's a question of intelligence. I think what do you think? Okay, great. What do you think it is? Um, I, I, I don't know what it is, but I know that I, I do know many smart people who still do it, okay. which is, which is why I, I'm very confused. Mm -hmm. I think many people just don't like to think for themselves, which isn't r quite the same as intelligence, I believe, but. Oh, uh, great. Okay. So I have to, I have to go into this cause this is sort of like my core value. 
Like if I were to no, um, skepticism, right? I yep. yeah. I am the type of person who sees um if if I were to raise a child, I would say the number one value I would try to impart would be you must think for yourself and decide what is true, decide what you believe. That is the cardinal virtue in my world. So yeah, maybe it doesn't directly correlate to intelligence. Maybe it, it has think, to do with how you're raised. I think that is very... I think it is quite difficult to think like that because it is way easier to just accept what the government, what the higher-ups say and just go with that. But then you're because, not free. Um, then you're a slave. Yeah. Okay. But people accept, many people accept the trade-off, I believe, from what I have seen. Yeah, least. you're probably right. I just, it, I, it, I find it unfathomable that most people would choose to live their lives and choose to live their lives as slaves. <laughs> it's shocking. It, it is. It is absolutely shocking. But yeah. I mean, I, be, I, be, I believe that's that's the main thing. And intelligence. I think intelligence is a very overrated trait. Ooh, like, say more about that. Yeah, that's that's a that's a bit of a hot take. I it think. is. No, I love it. I love it though. Please keep going. I'm I'm just gonna uh, make a game, please. I'm just gonna go get a cup of coffee, but but keep going. Um. So I believe intelligence is a very important tool. I believe it is a similar tool to um. You like uh. Personal strength is also a tool, like um, your body. But intelligence is much more useful. And people think intelligence, sometimes people think intelligence is the most important thing, especially in like places where, where in, in those bubbles with strategy games, many people think intelligence is the most important characteristic to have, to be intelligent. Mm -hmm. But personally, I disagree because I think intelligence is just a tool, which which you have. Um, but how you, you many, how you many... use it matters, sort of. Yes, of course it matters. Ah. But you also have many other tools. Sorry, are are we are... making a game? Do you want me to make a game, or do you have another another oh, one to say? Um, uh, yeah, could you make a classic fixed game? Easy, classic fixed it is. Perfect. Okay, so it's only one tool of many. Yeah, for example, we also have we also have our body as a tool. We also have um, charm, charisma as a tool. We have all kinds of different things that get us ahead in life to to use to live our life. And I think intelligence is very important, but it is not the most important. I think it is very important to keep a balance between intelligence and those other characteristics, especially social skills, are, I think, even more important than intelligence in our world. Because I know many, many people who, well, I hate to say uh, aren't very intelligent, but are still very far ahead just because they're very good with people. For, <laughs> for example, in politics, we have many populist people who are just you know saying going around saying things saying what people want to hear and well game is up what i didn't understand sorry so the game the game is oh, there you are yeah it it loads for me a bit longer because my internet isn't that great mm -hmm. yeah so um and I think many people just overinflate the importance of intelligence. But, um, yeah, charisma is a component. Emotional intelligence, how empathetic you are, is a component. Um, industriousness yeah, sure. is a component. Let's say you're super smart, but you're lazy, you don't get anything done. There's a lot of things that go into it. And, and as you said, harmony, right? Being in balance with yeah. yourself and with the world. For sure, for sure. It is harmony is, I think, one of the most important things, and also one of the most difficult things to achieve. So, personally, 
I I don't have it. I don't. I will. I strive for it, but I I don't have it to be honest. What? Harmony in in my well, you never skills, will in my life. You yeah, of course. You can only but... have little pieces of it. It's the same with perfection. You never you never have it, but you can strive for it. Yes. Yeah, we agree. Um. Now, all that said, though, the caveat here is that, as we understand it, intelligence is one of the best predictors of success. Not the only one, but if you were sure, to sure, if you sure. were to to try and guess um, if a person would be successful. Um, I, I, I don't know what the numbers are exactly, but they correlate highly to IQ or intelligence or however you want to think about it. Success in life, at least. Sure. Yeah. All right. So continue with the interview here. So you're, you've reached uh, 300 on the world leaderboard. That's your best rank? Yeah. Yeah. That was the highest I ever got. What do you think about ri risk rank? Well, it isn't, it isn't the most, <laughs> well, um, it isn't the most representative, I would say, but it is an indicator. Sure. That's, that's a great way to put it. That's a very neutral way, but also something that I would say is quite accurate. Rank isn't everything, but it tends to correlate with good players. Yeah. What's your favorite your thing grammar. about the, sorry, please go ahead. No, I, I was just uh, illustrate wanted to illustrate it. Basically, just if you're a grandmaster, you're probably decent at the game. It's mm -hmm. safe to assume. Yeah, unless you just did a a one v one new bride. Yeah. Doesn't really have the same ability anymore. All right. So, and yeah. you, you, what is your favorite thing about Risk? Well, um, I do have a couple things that I really like. First is, of course, the community. The Risk community is one of the most interesting, one of the most welcoming uh, communities that I have ever been part of. And and that's just that's just awesome, because many people are also very smart, I think, so much smarter than I am. And, and that's just that's just very, very interesting, very refreshing as well, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah, one, one of the big things that keeps me around. Getting to connect with folks like you, right? Getting to chat and learn and grow together. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. All right. Um, in your little questionnaire here, you said your favorite thing about the game of Risk is the intersection of psychology and logic, as well as the competitive spirit that comes from it. Yeah, it seems I'm much more eloquent in text than I am. You probably th you probably uh, thought it through a bit a bit better too. Yeah. I always like a well, good but, fight, but it's true. You like competition. What are you competitive in? Uh basically I I try to be competitive in most things that I do. So um whether it's sports or or a strategy game or a a different kind of game I just I just like to be good at it, not the best. I, I never, never strive to be the best, but I strive to be a good player, a competent player. How, how do you compete if you don't strive to be the best? That doesn't make sense. Well, um, I, I want to I be one of the best. I want to sit in the second row, basically. I like that. I don't know why, but, but it's just... I think you're full of crap. <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. Well, you, you know, in, I I don't think I can I can reach uh, the best risk player. That's I. That's, why, why not? That sounds pretty impossible. Why? Well, there are so many extremely good players, and, and I'm just I'm just one of them. I'm you already are one player. of the best risk players. Reaching three hundred on the world leaderboard puts you in the top point zero one percent. You already are. <laughs> so, what do you mean? It actually seems... I think th this is a common thing that I think a lot of people... Um, it might cut against their intuition. A lot of folks think that the game is larger and deeper than it appears. I think there's something like 30 people who are the top risk players. 
Sure, sure. And that's about it. And maybe there will be more now that the community is growing, thankfully, but... Yeah, there are a lot of very, very good new players. So. Yeah, of course there are. And I have, a, I have a strong vested interest in keeping them around. Yeah, I mean, you're the reason why many of them joined. I joined because of you. I really? Mean, I joined a while ago, but I oh, joined, I think... Allow me to offer my apology. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... I have the sort of personality where I get very into things. So as as I, do I. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't just a question of... Um, it, it, it was more of a question what I get into, not that I get into something. So, yeah. I was always going to get some hobby where I get like super invested in and, and play a lot and you know. You would say you perhaps you have issues with addiction? <laughs> sure. Yeah. I think I think this is why I never never started drinking alcohol, never started taking taking any drugs because I know if I started I couldn't stop. I don't think I could stop. Right. Yep. I mean, I'm able to moderate some physical substances, but as far as how I am choosing to spend my time, I, I let myself get fully subsumed by this hobby um, because I know I was going to one way or another. So if not this, then something else, and I might as well do something that benefits... You know, satisfies my mind. I feel like I'm learning. I feel like I'm growing. This is great because I'm also using it to connect with people in a way I didn't expect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that's that's really cool. I, I go for win-win. Win-win is, is another big part of my whole life philosophy. All right. Like, um, getting, yeah. getting, um, Getting things from the community and giving stuff back. So basically, like that. Um, how would I define win-win? So the idea of a compromise is lose-lose. You give something up, but they also give something up, and you reach some somewhere where you are both satisfied with the outcome, but neither player or neither person, neither party, um, has an ideal circumstance. I come at it from the other side, and I think of win-win as how do I design a circumstance where I get exactly what I want and you get exactly what you want? That does make a lot of sense, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what... It, and, and, and you can see, like, that's how I try to play. That's how I try to help build this community, right? I'm, I'm not here walking around pretending I'm the best of anything. I'm, I'm here to support. I'm here to help grow other players, other content creators. You know, I want to teach you all what I've learned so that we raise up the skill of all players and then maybe influence philosophically as well. I think that's a very, very noble cause. <laughs> I, and, and again, I'm not even doing it for nobility. I'm doing it for selfish motives. Like, I am doing this for my own benefit, but I want you to win too. Right? It's win-win. So I have to win. Obviously, Pete first. I have to win. Yeah, but yeah. given that I have to win, how do I create the scenario where you win too? I think that's that's a very good philosophy in, in life as well. Yeah, thanks, man. I, I thought about it long and hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so so you could, in, in this case, you would say that your real life philosophy um, correlates with with how you play in Risk. Yeah, well, the art mirroring life, uh, so to speak, right? The yeah. game as the microcosm of of yourself. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, what is your least favorite thing about the game? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I I can remember I I made a joke in my. In my um, form that I that I uh, what I or in in the questionnaire that I had to fill out 
Mm -hmm. But uh, I would like to answer this a bit more uh, seriously. Sure. And in in this case, I would say, I mean, I I really I really I really love the game, but sometimes it's just very heartbreaking to see how SMG just seems to almost ignore it in a way. Mm -hmm. Why do you suppose there that is? is? I, I don't know. I know you think it's the resource problem, and maybe it is, but... Uh, what do you think it is? I, I really don't know. I, I, I have no clue. Maybe it's, it's just they want, want the money, but they don't want to do their jobs, but that sounds contradictory to me, at least. But I mean, it's very hard to say. Yeah, and that's fine. We can't obviously know or understand the motives of someone who doesn't talk to us. We can only guess. Yeah. Look, I, I always like to go back to this. In, in my moments of maximum anger towards SMG, I still have to recognize that I wouldn't be here having this conversation if this wasn't the best Risk product I've ever played. Sure, so sure. good for them, right? The only reason sure. we're so pissed off is because we love this game so much. Yeah, it is. It is very, very, very nice to see what they did, because uh, I have I have never played another Risk game to be honest. Mm -hmm. I don't really have the comparison, but that's that's just a lot of a lot of fun. So. Yeah, so always lead, always lead with the gratitude there. Even, you know, getting back to what you were talking about, Harmony. You can't be angry when you're grateful. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, thank you. You know, we, we did something really beautiful here. And the only reason we're so loud is because we love it. Yeah, of course, of course. Oh. Why the trouble? Well... He does have five cards. So. He does have five he cards. He does have <laughs> five cards, though. I I, oh, no. Oh, no. I figured <laughs> out, but... <laughs> Too bad, Johnny. GG. Yeah. GG, man. I thought it was going to be you, but generally, Quatch. Be I've seen beat him me to the punch. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely beat, beat me to the punch. Yeah. Oh, you got a great answer for this one too. What makes you special? Well, um <laughs> Do you remember what you said? Yeah, I remember what I said. Yeah, well, I think every human being is, is special in their own unique way. So obviously we're all we're all unique persons, but in a way it doesn't that make us all very similar again. It's the philosoph philosoph philosophical Right. Oh, shit. So yeah, so we're all special unique snowflakes, which makes us the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to say. <laughs> Parlux wants me to attack purple. I know. Parlux wanted me to attack you. Oh. That's very rude of him. I know. I would never tell on him. I, I would never. <laughs> never. I would tell you. I would tell you. Excuse me. That's not okay. I don't know. We can consult I'm the sorry, videotape. I'm Maybe I'm lying. It's possible I'm lying. I would never. Never. <laughs> the thing is, Parlox, you're in a very bad spot. You, you gotta do something about that. Right, and that's why I'm trying Not to with you to what to attack purple. So let's walk together, guys. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but why would I attack purple? I like purple. Yeah, yeah I like purple because too. Because he's weaker. Because he's weak and he has a huge continent. He's overextended. Why don't we just kill him? Yeah. Why don't we that's just kill him? True. I mean, I mean. Am I wrong? You no. Could attack him. You're not wrong. Right. Pete, if you take his 17, I'll take it down his 10 and a few ones. <laughs> okay. I'm just hanging out, dude. Just hanging out. Rela having a relaxing game of Classic Fix with some buddies. Yes, we are. Alright, the, the question I ask all of the guests 
If someone asked you if you were good at Risk, how would you answer? Well, <laughs> that that's very relative. So, I think if, if a new player asks me, uh, sure, sure, I'm good at Risk. But if if someone like, well, it it doesn't matter who, but any any top player who's who's been around for for a lot longer than me would ask that question. I would say no, of course not. I'm I'm not that good. I'm just I'm just a guy trying to have fun, trying to trying to do his best in the game. But I'm not a pro. <laughs> right. I'm compared to most of the guests in this podcast. I'm not that good. I would say. Hmm. So you sell yourself short quite a bit with that. And it might it might not be intentional false humility, but I wouldn't be so inclined to not think of yourself as a top player already, right? We've played enough for me to I, I think of myself as a pretty good judge of of players' ability. We've played enough for me to confidently say you are a top grandmaster, so whatever accomplishments come for you in the future. Um, I predict them. <laughs> I, I do appreciate that. Yeah. I, I do. And I, I, I'm really trying. I'm trying in the free-for-all tournament. Yeah, I you're, really uh, that I can... you're at what for points right now? I'm at 44 points currently, which okay. is pretty good. Pretty good. Middle of the pack, sort of? Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, um, rank 40... 40, 48 or something like that. Okay. I don't quite quite remember, but it's pretty much exactly down the middle. Okay. So. Well, well, good luck, man. I'm glad to see. <laughs> oh. Ooh, Quatch went for it. Do you want to cooperate on purple now? <laughs> well, now it makes a lot more sense. Right, I told you. You just didn't want to listen. Well, I want you to do my dirty oh. work, obviously. Shut up. You shut up. I feel like I feel like purple is gonna be really angry. It's gonna move that forty back, that's for sure. Oh baby. Yeah. That's fun. Now you now you gotta break him. I know. No, fun. Oh, you gotta break him. I mean you, you, could, could, you could use your funny too. You can break him, Parlox. Oh I gotta break I, him? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you gotta break him. I gotta break him. <laughs> do it. Doesn't sound like something I would do at all. You should do that. Nah, it doesn't sound like something I would do at all. I'm the nicest guy you ever met. Somehow I doubt that. The nicest guy <laughs> you ever <laughs> met. Van, Van, why don't you invite him? Well, why would I invite him? I'm dependent on him. Mm -hmm. If no. I invite him... No, you can just guard against him in Greenland. I don't see why you wouldn't do that. Yeah, but then he, he comes around. And then he breaks me, and then I won't have my eight troops per turn, which would be pretty sad, to be honest. I think we're gonna see a suicide, but I'm I'm very curious. Maybe I will be proved wrong. From silent? I think so, yeah. You think silent hits the thirty-six? Yo, baby. Oh, no. I, oh I, baby! <laughs> you, you called it. Never mind. That's fun. Yeah. You I, actually, I actually thought she would try try one more to reconstitute, but it doesn't seem like it. So it's gonna be a three player equation. Me, Van, and Pete. How fun. All of us in a voice call. Oh, you missed it. What have yeah. you done? What have you done, Pete? I'm a stupid, stupid man, Parlox. I know. You didn't have to say it. Pete, did you just fuck up the kill? Is that what I did? Oh. All right. Um. So more interesting oh, than the, than the risk stuff is. I'm reconnecting. Perfect. Oh, you just connected? I'm oh, sorry. More interesting than the risk stuff is the reason I wanted to get you on the show is we were able to have uh, philosophical conversations over the the months that I've known I've known you uh, at a level of depth that is interesting to me. 
which is actually quite special and quite rare. So that was like, okay, I, we should talk to Vaughn. We should have some, some chats. So you wanted to challenge my view, my anti-nationalist view, right? I am not, a, I'm not in favor of nations. Oh no. Did we have a disconnect? No, we had a disconnect. No, don't break me. Don't break me. No, no, you motherfucker. Oh no. Everything was so good. Everything was so good. And now it's going to shit. Damn it. All right. <laughs> I'll be back. It's that Aust it's that Austrian internet. Yeah. Has to be it. Right. You think Quatch takes purple? I think he has to. I don't think so. I think he does. Why? Because purple will just keep slamming into him till he's dead? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Let's see it. And then he takes in North America? Yeah. That would and make then sense. It's me, you and me, you and Quatch. Interesting. Wait, what? Oh he hit because he bought it. Alright. Right. <laughs> Sorry, silent GG. Alright, then Quatch gets NA. Yeah. Do you wanna invade him? Like we can walk together. Can you hear me, guy? Hey, you you're back in action. Are you back? Are you back in the game? I'm back in the game as well. I'm gonna, Good. Yeah. Okay. I so, I will um chill just so that you can get back in here. I'm really sorry that happened. Yeah, I, it's the way she goes. I really. I've, I've had that happen a lot, but I thought it wouldn't in the Turner, Turner game because I actually tried to fix it, but it seems I didn't fix it well enough. It's all good, man. So I wanted to ask yeah. you about your view on nationalism versus mine. Yeah, yeah. So what is was, the be what is was... the benefit of nations in in today's day and age? So, um, I, I, um, I think, um, nationalism is a, uh, double edged sword, basically. Sure. I think it is, it can be very dangerous, of course, and we have seen that happen. We've seen what excessive nationalism does, but I think it can also be very important because um, some divide is, in my opinion, necessary because just imagine one country suddenly decides, well, uh, now we hate all Jews for whatever. Hypo stupid hypothetically, if some reason. if some country, you know, not that there would yeah, be a historical no, example of this, but no, hypothetically, <laughs> right? But but imagine that would happen. Yes. And, uh, so. Uh, what the people did who disagreed back in Germany, back in Austria, what the people who disagreed with that sentiment did, they went to another country, they went hiding, they went first, they went to France, they went to Switzerland, and then they went abroad, they went to the US, and uh, you know. It's nice think, to have somewhere to go. Yeah, and if, if there was only one country, and this happened, we, we wouldn't have any safeguards, basically. So if there was one one big human country and some dictator would um, get to power, oh, unfortunate. I'm really not focusing much on the game. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> happens. It happens on yeah. the show. Um, but if someone would... Uh, get control over such a big nation then they, they could be yeah hard. they could ruin all of humanity and there would be no option it could ruin all of humanity okay yeah, exactly so especially with today's technology so suppose that with today's technology I, I basically take the opposite position because suppose that with today's technology if we are not able to unify then we're doomed is kind of how i see it like, we have the ability to ruin the world. 
I see your point. Yeah. Right. So given that we have the ability to ruin the world, and our ability to ruin the world is not diminishing, our abilities are increasing, and I would argue our abilities are increasing um, inevitably, because the human survival advantage as an organism is that we invent and innovate. We create things that don't exist from ideas in our mind, and we make them real. And we adapt our environment to suit us, unlike pretty much every other animal who evolves to adapt to suit their environment. So given that, given that it is in our nature to create, um, and that we are becoming more and more powerful, we are in a situation where we will control the entire world, inevitably. So do we control it intentionally, or do we control it accidentally? And that is the big question. I see this unity as coming as an inevitable consequence of our being. So I'm seeking to control the inevitable rather than question its rightness or wrongness. Well, um, let's say, um, yeah, I, I, I can definitely see where you're coming from. Um, it's, if we don't, um, do something to to ensure that we won't self-destruct then it is very likely that this is going to happen sooner or later right. but um i don't know if a world government is 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 the answer or um i think it depends on the form that government takes well now now we're at your favorite topic government governmental reform yeah uh, so. only one of my favorite i have many favorite topics and, and quite frankly i'm i'm a pig in shit because i'm enjoying this whole conversation so you can go any way you want to go with it so um i can't really um imagine a government or a a form of governance be correct where where I where such a such a world government would be feasible. Okay. But uh, you had some interesting ideas, and I would love to maybe for you to um, ah, it, it's it's really hard. I'm I'm sorry. Some words just take your time, man. Can't seem to come to mind. It's all good. Um, Oh no, I disconnected again. Fuck. Really? Yeah. I don't know what's happening right now. I really don't. But uh, I would love to for you to to tell me your ideas. Maybe we can think about a way that this was po that this would be possible just because I can't imagine a form of government like this doesn't mean such a such a form yeah. of government can't exist. Yeah, let me let me flesh let me flesh it out. So it makes more sense. Um, 20 troops. What's going on? I'm back again. I'm back again. But why did you get 20 troops? I get, got 20 troops? What? I think I got 10. The set said... I had a set. You had two... It just gave... This is weird. Look at the battle log. It said it gave you 20 troops. It did. It That's double, a buck. That's it, it double a traded buck. you. That's so weird. Oh man, I'm screenshotting that. Cool. Okay. We got so, 20 troops in classic fixed, guys. <laughs> Pretty cool. That's very odd. Yeah, something else. I haven't seen that before, but sure. <laughs> I'll take it. Thanks, SMG. Someone's watching. Good game. Oh. GG. It seems we're going to get into the 1v1. And I don't like my chances. No, you got this. I believe in you. Well. Parlax got four troops for his trouble. <laughs> that's, that's really unfortunate. It is. It's unfortunate. Hmm. Yeah, good game. All right, well. What do we do here? See what Pete does. Will he go for the kill or 
On you? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, nah. You wouldn't kill me, Pete, would you? No, I don't. I would never kill you, Parlox. You're my best really? friend. Never! Okay. Never. Not in a million years. Awesome. I haven't killed you once in the history of all of our Risk games together. I know. You see, but now you feed me to black. To no! Black. He's not going to kill you either. Because then he Are loses. Sure? <laughs> I, th um, I think if you had done it, it would have worked out, but I, I, if I do it, it won't. I don't think it will. I will just die. Well, then Parlox lives. It seems Parlox lives. You're getting 11 troops. Feels good, huh? That's, that's quite a lot. Feels pretty. I, I just noticed that. I just noticed that. Good. I think I also want to get that many troops. I don't blame you. Yeah. So you blocked your full stack inside yourself, Pete. I know. I'm stupid and I suck at risk. Yes. I, ju I just noticed that. Yeah. The the sucking at risk is really is really embarrassing, I gotta say. Yeah. I wish there was something I could do about that. But it just seems inevitable when you're playing with Pete that he's gonna do something dumb. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Pete, I think you could just kill Parlux, go into the 1v1 one -one with me, and kill me. Really? I think so. I would. I would probably do that. But does that sound like something I would do? But I told Parlox I would never kill him in a million years, and I wouldn't lie to my buddy Parlox. Right. So you no. would kill me Don't first. Do it. <laughs> Don't oh. do it. No. <laughs> no. He <laughs> gets fucked. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck me. <laughs> How dare you? I dared. I, know. I think I think I should have just tried to kill Parlux and go into the one you want. Probably. Well, you're gonna get some good dice, so I gotta shrink that stack. I, I don't think you don't you need some good dice, to be honest. I think you could get some shit dice and, and win this. So far so good. I'm rolling some sixes on you. Oh, Ooh. Look at that. GG! GG. Well. <laughs> but I have a set. Not that it matters, but. I can't just lay down and die. That would I, be. I, I don't sad. expect you to. I don't expect you to at all. But your idea on governmental reform would be to um, let each individual vote um, for for laws on their phone, basically. So I think I think we need to rethink. Yes, but I think we need to rethink the word laws in this regard. So I think society governs itself a lot better with culture than it does with laws. And the fact that we see more and more laws is a symptom and an indication um, that our society is sick, dying, and fractured. All right? So that's the first thing. Um, so I would advocate for a minimum of laws, and I would advocate for an abolishment of the legal profession and the political class. So in, in lieu of that, what you want would what I would want to see would be a system where personal responsibility and personal freedom are maximized. Do you have more settings? Um let uh yeah, actually I really like the the zombie attorney settings. Uh you advanced? advanced? Cool. Yeah. I'll yeah. set it up. What do you think of that before we get even deeper into it? 
so um generally i do agree i also think that there are a lot of laws and a lot of um crimes that really shouldn't be crimes in my opinion especially related to uh, drugs for example okay game is up so a lot of uh, prisoners are there for uh, for the reason that they have consumed drugs right i don't think that should be should be at all the case i agree that's because, that, that's all we really have to say about that. I think it's utterly absurd yeah. that human beings are incarcerated for putting substances into their bodies willingly. I think that is yeah. an obvious sign of how sick our society is and an indication that the powers that be that would like to keep you in your little mental prisons do not want you to think for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. And I think our our prisons are like I know in the U.S. they are in Austria they it's a little bit better but especially in the U.S. so many prisons are completely overfilled with with people who in my opinion haven't really committed that uh, like a, a real crime like they have put substances in in their body yeah sure but they don't hurt anyone else the only people who who they hurt are themselves mm -hmm. and not even that is true with all drugs but you know it's it's just think it how, seems to be a, think of a, how these systems evolve okay so you start off with the earliest lawyer now what would the first lawyer want well they would not only want to ensure that they continue to have a job so the concept of institutional inertia but also, they would want to ensure that they got to write the laws. So the vast majority of the political class comes from the legal profession. Okay, so we have this sort of Byzantine, overly complicated, nonsense system. Who is purple? Oh, that's you. Oh, nice. All right, well, I guess we ruined each other's games. I don't think I ruined my game at all. No, I'm going to kill you. You're going to kill me? Okay, okay. I sure am. <laughs> well, good luck with that. Thank you. So, um... Right? So, so my, my point is that um, we have allowed this class of people to entrench themselves as the ones who get to determine the rules and of course because of that we don't talk about them as if right we, we we treat lawyers as if they are professionals right instead of the parasites they are siphoning value away from productive endeavors in the economy and instead over complicating the system for their own gain sure and um yeah, no, no, I don't have anything to add. I sure. agree with that. <laughs> okay, so, and and it, it and it's similar with the financial services industry, right? If you run banks for profit, what you end up with is the current system, where almost all of the value in the entire economy is this gambling game, where people, um, where very rich people bet against other very rich people. Yeah, with everyone else's so savings. And what comes out of that is uh, financial crisis after financial crisis, inflation extremely high, and uh, especially now, um, people are trying to, um, in many Latin American countries, people are trying to fix inflation by just saying that's the exchange rate, that's the official exchange rate. And that's just not being true at all. So, um, I, it's it's. I'm I'm really sorry. I'm I, can't, I It's it's very difficult to to, to speak. You can't think, think and, those can't things think things and things. play Risk at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and also think and play Risk. I probably wasn't the smartest move what I did, and you know. It's all good, man. Way she goes. 
Okay, so yes. what 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 would you if you say you have radical views on the justice system, what would you do? Well, I would decriminalize a lot of things first of all. Yeah. First of all, most drug offenses, I would um I would decriminalize taking drugs. I would agree. And I would um, let the government um, take over the drug, the drug trade. Basically, so um, if you really uh, want um, your cocaine or, or your cannabis or whatever, um, you can go to certain licensed shops to uh, where you can get uh, a certain amount of it. Mm -hmm. it, it also can be, um, it, you're also registered, basically, and you, um, if, if, for example, um, you, you, you just buy uh, so, ex uh, so much and and uh, to the point where it's it's very reasonable to assume that you're addicted that a help is available for you so that you could um have someone who you who you um could turn to with your addiction uh and and try to get out of it basically um So, uh... Yeah, so we agree. I I would also, if I was designing a a designing or redesigning a legal system, I would make it such that um, almost nothing is illegal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I do I do agree. And then I would make yeah. the, the penalties for the things for the very few things that are illegal incredibly harsh. So there there you come in with the death penalty. Well. The idea of punishment doesn't sit right with me. I don't believe we should torture people. So in lieu of that, right, I don't believe in punishment as part of the justice system, fundamentally. So sure. um, removing human beings from the entire system seems to me to be more humane. Which I know cuts against a whole lot of people's intuition. Well, uh, but... So you would rather die than than um, live a life in prison. A hundred times out of a hundred, I would rather I would much rather be executed by the state than be imprisoned. I'm already a slave, right? I'm already in prison. The uh, current circumstance of you are told you're free. And you're free to choose between two different teams that actually don't make any difference at all is so farcically absurd that i can't help but just laugh like it's amazing to me hmm so i um, here i think you're in a pretty tough spot yeah you would though I would think that. You would think that. So do you want to hold that bonus? Yeah. Sure would. I, I, can, I can let you hold that you, if you want. What a guy. What a guy, this guy. Because I, because I, 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 I don't need that bonus. But... Well, you already got a little, little piece of Africa for yourself. Maybe, maybe I've got some. Oh, someone else doesn't want you. I know, it's too bad. I think that was probably a last chance game. Yeah, well. Can't win them all, right? Yeah. What I did in Iceland was, was in... in retrospect the mistake as well but mm -hmm. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say why well you couldn't Maybe see you know. oh i do know you couldn't see what was going to happen no 
I mean, I, I, I figured you had it, but... And I, I, and I figured I could um, easily uh, take it out, but, uh, well, but I, 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 th I figured anyone would have it, someone would have it. Unfortunately, it was you, and I didn't really think about how you would react. To be honest, no, I didn't really. Do, I didn't really do anything to you. Yeah, I mean, you—it's it's very difficult. I think. What for me you to do something to, to you? Me. You could break my one bonus, but I don't really see very many ways you can set in and break my bonus that's yeah definitely. i can definitely do that but you don't surprise oh <laughs> we right. can't be good yeah i thought we might i thought you might say that now I thought you might! <laughs> 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 if there was a story in this game that on, only me, Silent Legend, and Pete could see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he stacked in the continent that I wanted, and then I ended up having to do... Yeah, but then why did you break, why did you break me, Parlox? Because that's the only way I had to get a car. That's bullshit. I can say <laughs> I, I literally did it for three stories. That's ridiculous. So I that know. was your only card, was to break my bonus? My yeah. first bonus of the game when I finally get it? Yeah. <laughs> Rude. Shut up. You shut up. Unbelievable, no. this man. Who does he think he is? Hmm. But now what happens? The question... So we're buddies, Pete, right? Well, for now. Sure, sure. I've done the here's, impossible. Here's, I've here's a question. Reconciled with you. No, it's definitely possible. I'm not a fool. You can't fight. You can't fight everyone at the same time. You have to kill your enemies one by one, right? Isn't that what okay, they say? Yeah. Never fight a war Never. on two fronts. <laughs> I, I have heard them say that, yeah. They have said that. But you got a question. Well, now I lost it. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, quite all right. No worries. You don't have that yet, right? No, I don't. <laughs> all right, so... Um, it was something about, oh, it's okay. So the idea was, we're talking about redesign. And a lot of people um, think that it's never going to happen. There's no way you could possibly redesign the system, so there's no point in talking about it. What do you think about that? Well, oh, you do have that shit. I did, I did. Oops. <laughs> okay. Well, now you have it for sure. Well done. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I absolutely do believe that you can redesign it. I believe it is extremely difficult and uh, there will be a lot of trial and error. Mm -hmm. So we have been having a lot of trial and error in the right. past. Um, we've tried to um, design a better system with communism. And that was a disaster. It, it didn't really work out. No. Yeah. So, I think when we try to redesign it again, it will be, it will be similarly difficult. We will... Ah, you're going to take me out there, fair enough. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I probably should have put more troops there, but, you know. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, that's fine. I now, now you, we're on different sides of the board, and now we don't have to worry about each other. Uh, how gracious. <laughs> Isn't it ideal? 
You have a very nice two point guard. That's nice. <laughs> That's not, you're happy for me. <laughs> I have a one point guard. Happy. I just have total faith in, in Johnny. Oh, you have a it's true. You have a one point guard. That's I right. See that. I just have faith in Johnny on the other side. Okay, so the value of discussing systems redesign, the way I see it, is first accept the premise that our systems are fatally flawed, right? We cannot iterate from a class of rich, well-respected lawyers to something that fairly redistributes um, income and wealth of all people to all people. We can't iterate that because these greedy fucks will take it all for themselves. They need to buy another yacht. So given that, we need to figure out how we can discuss what the future would look like without these people in charge. I think the uh, one thing that is often left out in those discussions is well to get those people out of power i don't think you can do it peacefully to be honest i do or you do i do tell me about it i would love to well you need this is a messaging problem right we have access to very very powerful media tools that we never did before so sure. if i have a hill to die on in my life it is to spread the message of systems redesign and popularize it in a succinct and punchy way so that the simplest among us, those who would be governed and enslaved by complicated tax law, complicated legal systems, complicated nonsense, political, are able to look at their cell phone, which they have on them all the time and say, do I want this or do I want that? And you design a system where the prompts are daily. Everyone has the ability to propose um, motions, right? We, we don't want to leave any stakeholders out. We don't want to actually disenfranchise people. So what does, what does the franchise look like if we were to actually make it so that people could choose very different that's for sure yeah well it looks like freedom to me it looks like a step towards freedom at least sure now what many people would say is they don't they don't trust the general public maybe they don't uh, i don't trust the, the general public either but I trust, so, I trust a politician whose stated goal is to represent me, but whose actual um, technical skill set is to stand on a corner and wave and, and spout platitudes even less. I expect them to rob me. I also expect them to give us the poorest quality decision-making possible because that's what they've consistently done forever. Right? Right? Uh, the system is structurally flawed. We have politicians that can't represent us, even if they wanted to. They can only represent themselves. And that worked. That was the best thing that we could ever have had hundreds of years ago. But in 2022, with climate change, this is suicide. So what do we do about it? <laughs> we have these conversations we have these conversations sure and we can think about ways to to improve it uh you you said if we had a tool if we had an app where we where we could control our lives yeah He's making attacks. Sorry. No, it's all good. He's making he's making some key attacks, guys. You, the the mind can only oh. think about one complicated game at a time. Oh. Did you piss off Silent? Oh no, Silent and I are buddies. Oh. But apparently, someone else pissed off Silent, and now I have lost train. Uh, lost. Uh, 
Now I lost. Uh... Now I lost my train of thought. That's what what I wanted to say. Ooh, poor Johnny. Johnny how, how lucky for you. Gun, gun, rated P. I saw what happened. Yeah, <laughs> poor Johnny. Yeah, and you're lucky. You know what they call me, Parlox. They call me Luxac McGee over here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Shut up. You shut up. No. <laughs> what does Pete do? Now what do I do? Have we have we reached each other already? It seems like it. Man, you expanded quickly. Or were you in a second place? You must have been no, in a no, second I, place. I did expand quickly. You expanded quickly. There was nobody there, eh? It was just zombies? Yeah, I think it is you know no, there was nobody here. So I think it was very important. For me to, to cut expand. you out of the side? Like when I uh, removed you from 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 the Egypt side, that was, I would have been dead otherwise, right? Uh, probably, yeah. Yeah, I think so. So I think that was absolutely the correct move. Oh, I, I can't attack. Did I attack just now, or? Yeah, it looks like oh, to I me. Did. I think it looks like I'm gonna win this, surprisingly. Good for you. Very good for me, yeah. Very good for you. Yeah, I think the key to those settings is to expand very quickly. So, even if you have to go bad neighbor, which is usually not something I do, usually I just I'm very passive, stay around, try to make other people fight, and then clean up. Right. But in those settings, I think it's very important to expand quickly and just grow uh, stupidly large, basically. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh! So you did have something back there. Now that's gonna be interesting. I was surprised you had so so few troops. But now I understand. <laughs> <laughs> there were other places. <laughs> there were. There, there were, were other places. How many did you start with? Six. So you have 18 territories? Or you still have a bonus somewhere? Boy, I still have a bonus. Who knows? Where does he have? He has got Iceland or something. Now what do I do? That's That's... Full we'll stack, bro. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I couldn't attack with it, unfortunately, but... I don't think you have another stack. Then, well, then I'm dead. That, that's, that would be preferable. No, no, no. You die, not me. I win the game! I'm the hero! Don't you know how these stories go? <laughs> I mean, usually the hero wins, but... Oh no! I, <laughs> I completely forgot to break your bonus. I'm... Uh... I'm guarding you. That's, that's really sad. <laughs> I'm the hero, don't you know? Sure, the hero wins. We have those stories in German. A lot of those. It's always the hero who wins. Oh, and the hero who has the 47 stack. 
lying around. I once again made a path. Yeah, I made the same one when I was back there. I see, I see. Yeah, I think, I think uh, this might be a very nice comeback game for you. Yeah, looks like, eh? Unless. 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 Maybe I still got a 47 stack somewhere, but. Probably not. Eighteen, huh? Not that much. Not that old. You know what I mean, dude? You're good. You are a good player. Like, there's no denying it. <laughs> you can be as humble as you'd like, but you are a very talented player. And I see if you stick with this, you'll have a, I do a great future it. in the game. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying my best in the free for all, but we'll see. Well, yeah, free, free for all's a I ton can... of luck, too, right? Come on. Yeah, it is, but. Did it again. Yeah, but there was no way I could do anything. But yeah, I did. I did do it again. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna let the zombies kill me. Fair enough. I don't. Uh, but actually, I think you will kill me. Still. I think I kill you. Yeah. Yep. Because fun fact, I never had ice. <laughs> there was just territory. There was 18. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So then, what happened to Silent? They let the zombies behind them somehow. Uh, I killed Silent. No, but in order for Silent to not have Iceland, did they let the zombies behind them? Um, uh, Silent had had Iceland. I I just I just killed him, but I I didn't guard Iceland later, so I let the zombies in. Right. Well, GG, sir. GG. That okay. was a very interesting game. I think. I enjoyed. Obviously, I'm biased. I also had to. Had to go balls out on that Parlox kill when I had the chance, but uh, worked yeah. out. Worked out for me. <laughs> that you killed me. I'm not. I break my break my first bonus finally when I take it. <laughs> Get dead. You you deserve to be punished. I disagree. I think I deserve to win this game as the game has been borne out. Parlox, we both tried to kill Pete's strategy, but we just. We just couldn't do it. Didn't take it's us. Sad. Didn't take. That's uh, totally unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. All right, what are you thinking for? Let's do one more game. What are you What are you thinking for the settings? A good, a good last game. Hmm. I really, I really like fog. To be honest, it's fine. I enjoy. It. But maybe. Oh no. Ooh, that could get broken. I know, it could. Let's do. Let's do. Let's not do fuck. Let's do uh, progressive. Cool. On, on Pirate Bay. Okay. No fuck. Regular world on progressive? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Let me just kill these zombies. Maybe I need to think too much for that, but it, it's it's whatever. <laughs> hey, I, I think that's where the that's where the great play with friends record comes from. You a good play with friends record? Uh, you you do you do. Oh, I got nothing compared to some people. I mean, for a free for all play, I it's pre pretty impressive, I think. What do I win? Like a third of my... Oh, I can't see my own record. 
What do we win? Like a third, a third of my games? Ah, uh, I'm always getting kicked out, but I'm I'm gonna check. Yeah, it, it's about a third. It's actually not as impressive as I thought. But... Yeah, that's what I mean. I win about a third of my games. Oh damn it! I fucked up. Yeah, I I fuck up up a lot of the technical aspects as well. Oh, 69. You know, that's one of the things that I think uh, differentiates uh, me, or, or maybe you, from most players, because I think technically I'm better than most players, or just you are a bit worse, both of you, than most top players. Yeah, I'm definitely, I make a lot of technical mistakes. It's just passing mistakes, or, or, I, or I just don't plan my route properly, something like that. I know, I'm, yeah, I noticed about Pete as well that uh, Pete, you make more split errors than most. Yeah, I make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, but mostly technical. You know, I don't think it's strategical mistakes. What does that mean exactly? I, I mean, you know, maybe you misclick, maybe you split wrong, maybe you, you know, all that type of stuff. Ah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, well. Hope it is perfect, right, Pylox? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's what happens when you're so old. <laughs> so that's the age is what it is. <laughs> my mind is starting to crumble before my eyes. Yes. Yes. The old man, Pete. It's a sa sad but true. Ah, you what, like 39? I it's am. Oh, yeah. it's, it oh is. I, 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 I guessed it right. Yeah, I'm 39. It's a spot on. I, I didn't actually know. I just I just uh, figured late 30s. So mm -hmm. you probably said it somewhere, and I just unconsciously remembered. I think a whole lot of people know a whole lot more about me than I know about them, given the yeah, uh, how public that's... this work has become. Yeah, you have blown up. It's yeah. it's really impressive. Uh, today you had like 430 viewers. That's more like I don't 469. Think... <laughs> 469? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. I think the stream peaked at 420, actually. No, no, no. I, no, I saw it. It was I, more. Really? Let, 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 yeah. let me just. Uh, put, I got a screenshot from Kilted that he sent in the staff chat in your server. It said 469 viewers, and I saw that live as well. It definitely passed 400. That's that is wild, you know? Almost 500. Just imagine <laughs> if I was able to quit my job and, and do this full time, like playing Risk, right? No less, playing the game of Risk. <laughs> well, that's a blessing. That's all I can really say about it. I don't think there's anything I'm doing all that special. I'm just being myself. You're very good with people, I think. Right. You can put on a very good show. So. Good. That's that's the goal, isn't it? Sorry, uh, did you have a map? World on Progressive? Yeah, um, Pirate... Oh, no, Pirates, it was... Pirates Bay? Uh, no, it was... It was. Um, I don't... The the Skull Pirate map. I don't oh, okay. Skull and Crossbones. Okay. Yeah, Skull and Crossbones. I like that. Skull and Crossbones, World on Progressive. Um, yeah. No Fog? No Fog. No Blizz? No alliance? Let's go? Yep. Cool. All right. So for the last game, you also wanted to talk about, you said our current mental health crisis is a fascinating topic, including pressure on social media, loneliness, and other contributors, as well as the age-old question, how do I live a good life? Well, that is the question of philosophy, isn't it? Yeah. It's... It, I have been thinking a lot about it. I always... Um, from a young age, I've had uh, trouble uh, with my mental health, and it's it's I I've been trying to find ways to make it better. I would say to to fix it. And now I see a lot of young people my age and even younger uh, struggle with even worse problems. Right. For example. In my in my in my class, there were a couple of very, very depressed, very, well, 
uh, students who just you could feel that they were not having a good time. Students where you would just uh, where I would ask myself, do I see them tomorrow or are they jumping off bridge or something like that? Yeah, and that just really that just made me really sad. Like mental health is such a such a nebulous question. It's like it's really hard to see what the problem is, but it's there nonetheless. I believe uh, from young people in the United States, it's uh, I think the most common or the second most common uh, way of dying is suicide. And that's just, you know, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to, we need to collectively um, find ways to to just make that better because <laughs> that's that's just not that we, we can't live like that i mean it's unacceptable yeah yeah absolutely yep it is completely unacceptable may, may i say a few things about that absolutely sure sure okay so uh my understanding of mental health or in, of why it's so bad in our current age um evolutionarily from evolutionary perspective, uh, our our brains or evolution is not concerned about our mental well-being. It's concerned about how we survive. And right now, we live in a very different age than we did 200,000 years ago. Uh, because we have, uh, most of us at least, we have uh, the resources to survive daily without much concern. Uh, except uh, for our well-being, for mental health. Uh, and, and we also, in the last few decades, we live uh, more and more in our homes, uh, for most people, you know, uh, with, with computers and phones and television and all that stuff. We can just stay at home and we think to ourselves, that's all I need. And I don't need, I don't need to get out of my home. I don't need to socialize. Mm -hmm. So people uh, get depressed right. and other things. Yeah. Okay, so to summarize what you said, and tell me if I have it, um, human beings are biologically adapted to an environment that they don't live in, and currently live in an environment that they're not adapted to. Yes, because evolution is concerned with just our survival, not our mental well-being, and now we live in a very different age than we're supposed to be in. I would like to add to that. So I agree with everything you said, but I would also like to add this point. Our of course. institutions have a vested interest in us being predictable, being obedient, and being productive. Which is why you see, in, in lieu of psychedelic-assisted th psychotherapy, which I'm a passionate advocate of, um, freeing people's minds to iterate their life to um, a state that they're satisfied with, in lieu of that, we see the explosion of addictive antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication and antipsychotics that have people medicated so that they can continue to wake up in the morning commute to a job they hate to make just enough money to commute home be so exhausted watch television fall asleep eat shitty food pay their taxes and do it all again tomorrow and that doesn't sound like any life for anybody. Right. The system is not designed to make us happy. The system is designed to profit. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so how? So I think uh, when, now that we understand that, I think uh, the best way that we can improve upon that is to understand how we can change uh, the incentives, the motives of the system, so that uh, the system is not motivated by profit. It's more motivated by other things that may make us as a society, as human beings, more happy and more fulfilled. Like Bhutan. They measure gross national happiness. Which sounds oh. which sounds as a as a knee jerk kinda of like hokey or quaint. But the more I think about it, it's like why wouldn't society measure happiness? Why wouldn't the quality of the life of your citizens be the most important thing to measure, actually? Like the the story with COVID, getting back to that, is a quantity over quality problem, right? And it's a quality it's a quantity to the exclusion 
of quality problem. We are only concerned with um, fatalities and we are not remotely even a little bit concerned with the quality of life cost to failing to stop the virus from spreading, right? That's the rationale for lockdowns. It failed. And I, and I refuse to give up any more years of my life to fail to stop a virus from spreading. But it's just another example of the quantity over quality preference that we see again and again question. and again. Yeah. I have a question, Pete. So if you were in charge of, say, the United States or Canada, whatever Western country that you want to, to choose, yeah. um, and you had to deal with the coronavirus like as, as it happened, you know, like from the start of... Uh, from December 2019, when it starts to spread until now, how would you deal with it? The very first thing I would do is I would stop every single plane from flying into my country. It seems like something a three-year-old would think of. How does this virus spread? Well, probably a good idea to stop planes from flying around the world. Unless... We're not interested in stopping it from spreading. And if we're not interested in stopping it from spreading, that's also okay. Because human beings happen to live in an ecosystem with viruses for our entire existence. And now all of a sudden, we're going to change our behavior and pretend that we have mastery over nature. Really. The hubris in that. So I'm, I'm actually pro... Um, vaccine mandates if the vaccine made sense right the vaccine doesn't make sense it doesn't work so forcing people to take it well you don't want to overrun the healthcare system a thing that happened in ontario was funny they started this vaccine passport thing now bearing in mind ontario has uh socialized health care so the issue of our emergency rooms being overrun is a very real issue and we all pay into that so if you're the type of person to respect bodily autonomy, which I am, then you also have to be logically consistent and say, all right, I choose to have the right to not take this vaccine. But then I also choose to have the right to not take up a bed or a ventilator in the ICU when and if I get COVID. You can't have it both ways. You can't reject some of the medical science. That's rational. Right? <laughs> I think that's fair enough. Yeah. Like, I have a friend who is, like, you know, aggressively anti-vax, and I love him to death. And the place we disagree on, like, I hate the restrictions on my freedom just as much as he does, but the place we disagree on is, interestingly, his his belief that there is a conspiracy at hand. I don't think anyone is pulling the strings. I think this is a series of systems failures. We are getting the poorest quality service we could possibly be getting. And of course we are. Because we're not selecting for anything better. What do you have to say, Van? I was very preoccupied with the, with the game, but... Um... Yeah, it's it's the the people who we elect need to show that they're doing something. They need to um, they do something just so the population can see that they have done something. It's just so people can't say, yeah, the government hasn't done anything, so let's let's elect someone else. Right. And. And it's better for the government to do something, even if it doesn't work, than do nothing. Which uh, doesn't make any sense logically, but uh, from the from the perspective of the politicians, it does. And that's the problem. So it is a systems problem. Sure, sure. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I can't stop beating this drum. Because, call me crazy, but it jumps out to me as so loud and obvious. So, um, we need a, oh, you're taking that? 86%, huh? No. 
I made sure he can't get out. <laughs> How nice are you? Very. Very. Nicest guy. Nicest guy you ever met. <laughs> Do you want to talk about mass formation? We can, we can absolutely talk about it. Okay. So how would you define it? I would define it as a collective... Um, it, it's... I'm sorry, I, I'm just missing words. It's it's horrible. <laughs> I would define it as almost a collective psychosis, something um so to form an, an, a mass formation, we first need an ideal, something, or we need a problem, and we need someone to blame for that problem, and then we need we need we need to make sure that in, that in our framework, we are the good guys. So, from what I understand, the the concept of a mass formation occurs when there is a um, critical mass threshold of loneliness in a population. And the lonely people seek connection with each other. Um, and in lieu of that, what they get is they get connection to a mass. So the mass is the individual connecting to the collective in lieu of connecting with each other. And we see that with the witch hunts, we see that with the crusades, we see that in Soviet Russia, in Nazi Germany, and we see it with the COVID epidemic because there is a problem. We have a virus, it's a mysterious virus, and then there's a presented solution, we have a vaccine. And then you see the fervor by which people um, join the movement to the collective is correlated with, um, you know, there's a subset of people who will do whatever the government says. There's a subset of people who think for themselves. And then there's, then there's a subset of people who just go along with what the mass is, what, what the majority is doing. Sure. I feel like Parlox had something to add. What? Did you have something to add? Uh, no, I just wanted to mention that uh, Van uh, can skip, which is, I find interesting. Mm -hmm. I, oh. I, actually, I, actually, I actually missed it. I, I, meant, <laughs> I, I meant to skip it. I didn't know it, but I, I meant to skip it. Then I, I focused too much on, on what you said, and, and uh, like uh, in instinctually I attacked. Yeah, this is my yeah, whole plan. It was right? the exact same, exact same thing for me. To I, distract I, I people. should have skipped. But now I get the first four set. Amazing! <laughs> yeah, I, I to to uh, I didn't realize it until you said it right now that I that every uh, that the people before me skipped. I, well, I noticed it immediately after I did it. I just didn't. I I just d did attack like without actually thinking about what I'm doing because I I was focusing on Pete's uh, conversation. Yeah, now I'm in a... Yeah, so we have absurdities occur in that circumstance, right? When there is a mass psychosis, essentially, absurdities are accepted. Like, I sat in a restaurant in January in Toronto on a back patio. You can imagine how cold it was. My food was freezing in front of me. Because we are torn as the government. We both want to allow our restaurateurs to continue to create value, continue to employ people. But heaven forbid we we don't stop the thing from spreading that's already spread everywhere right we failed we've just failed and instead of accepting that we failed we maintained this song and dance bullshit absurdity way way longer it, it took the general population of canada about two whole years to march on the capital and say enough and even then when they did they were vilified in the media i'm sure you guys saw 
um, the trucker protests, and you know there was a Nazi account. flag. The bank accounts got frozen. Yeah, no, you can't protest in Canada. Free speech is over. Every single change I have seen my government make over the time I've been alive disincentivizes me from living here. I'm not free, and I'm less free than I used to be, and that's fucking scary. It's, it's a similar thing is happening in Austria, but very, very covertly, I would say. Okay. So we had we had a satire show. We don't have that often in Austria. That's a very rare thing. Mm -hmm. So we had, we had a satire show. And, you know, satire shows, they, they do what they do. They, they criticize people, and at some point, they decided to criticize the government as well. And what do you know? It got shut down. Okay. And that's just that's that's I think the the most um, it's it's just an example that really illustrates how opposition seems to get less and less in Austria. So we we used to have um, differences of opinion in the government, but Lately, we have, um, for, uh, while COVID, basically, we had the pro-vaccination parties, mm -hmm. which was every normal party, and we had the uh, anti-vaccination parties, which were basically very right-wing, very almost neo-Nazi, right. I would say. Right. And that, that's just... That's not really uh, how democracy and free, 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 um, free expression of opinion should work, because all the all the normal parties got sucked into um, into the. They couldn't disagree with vaccine mandates because if they did, they would be they would be Nazis and and. Uh, oh yeah, guilt by guilt by association. All those yeah, exactly. who think, all those who have the audacity to think for themselves and to go against the mainstream narrative, are vilified and guilty by association. There is no nuance of thought. I'm not pro or anti anything. I happen to have a spectrum of opinion, and it's diverse and it's complex, and it takes this long to flesh it all out. Parlox and I had uh, had an interview show. Um, which I'm going to release before this one, and it's just Parlox just just earnestly trying to understand what the hell I have to to say and what I believe, and it it takes a long time to discuss complicated ideas. You know, uh, I just want to, to to add something. Yeah, buddy. Uh, you two talked about your countries and how they are being managed. You know, Israel has basically been in, in a authoritarian state since like 2006. Okay. Because uh, there was uh, the Lebanon war, the second Lebanon war. I don't know exactly the year, but it's around the mid-2000s, like 2004 to 2006. And then ever since then, because the government it was like a, considered a disaster, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu rose to power. Uh, again, he was already a prime minister in the 90s, but then he rose to power again. And basically he became prime minister for like a decade and a half. So that's fun. You know, it's just, uh, <laughs> I think it's basically the same process as, as your two countries, but just a bit more extreme, you know. The, well, the, so, yeah. so as far as I know, the Knesset and um, the Austrian parliament as well has proportional representation, right? Yes. So we don't even have that. We have first past the post. So we have federal MPs who form the gut. What is happening? Oh, okay. White's well, dying. GG Gold. Well, that helped me. That really helped. Not expecting to so at least with proportional representation, you have smaller parties getting a um, reasonably equal shot to make their case heard in the federal parliament. But in Canada, we don't have that. So we just have... Um, the the party that is that forms the government, and then if they have a majority, they get to pass legislation for their term. 
Now, it's a good thing that the wheels of government turn slowly and the legislation is mostly garbage, but who are you killing, Parlox? No one. Ah, oh, you're not getting them. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's too tough. I thought I could do it, but then, you know, the 17 is not enough for the 69 and the ones. Too much. Yeah, you put your guard again. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's gonna be a I spicy got, finish. Uh, yeah, I wanted to guard gold, but then he saw what happened there. Oh, that was fun. I'm also yeah. guarding black technically, but it's not that much, so... You know. I, wa I was actually guarding gold, and I, I I removed my guard because I wanted someone to kill him. Overextend, maybe. Well, well that that was uh, nice timing, I suppose. Alright, let's see if I, have... yeah. I don't know if it works out, but... Let's see if I can pull this off. You're, oh, you're really gonna... You're trying. Oh, yeah. God damn it. Oh, yeah, I'm trying. Harlocks! Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck me! How could you say yeah. that? You're, you're gonna do what? 99? That's insane. <laughs> oh, that makes more sense. No, I, I, would, I would definitely try. Alright, okay. That makes sense. Oh, 99. Okay. I did. Nice. It, was, it was 99. Didn't work. Yep. Yep. Nice. Okay. Well, now, I, now I think, what? Van wins, maybe? I don't know. I can't. Kill right. him. No, no, That's no. So the problem. Just, right. I just saw that. So he just uses up his set. Yeah. Okay. No one can kill him. Unfortunate. Yeah. I wonder. What do you want, OP? Why I suck at risk, of course. Yeah, well, that is obvious, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> I think you're in trouble, Parlox. You think? He wouldn't. He wouldn't help me. He would never. No, oh, he's just gonna fail to kill me instead. He's just gonna ruin my game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's adorable. I know. That's fun. No, he doesn't try. Hmm. Cute. So. Buttons. Should I try to kill Van? Yes. No. Yes. That won't work. I think it'll. I think it will. Oh okay. no! No. Uh, no, of course it won't. It, it's a difficult okay. kill, you know. No, I know. You won't try. Don't worry. <laughs> but if you can kill Van, that means Van can kill you, right? I can't do that. All right, before this show ends, is there anything you wanted to get to that we haven't? Um, I, I wanted to talk about a lot of things, but I'm, I, fe I feel like I'm not really able to correctly put it into words because just it seems my vocabulary is very limited of a voice. Well, we can always, is, we can is, always chat again, man. Yeah, it's 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 really. I I would have loved to to talk more about things, and I have ideas in my head, but they are all in German. Right, I, right. Yeah, and it, it's it's. I feel like I got into this thinking it would be easier. <laughs> but, no, it's 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 um, not. And, and and you know what? Good on you for trying. Like, we're we're really asking a lot of our minds to play a game and to have you know, the highest sort of most complex level of conversation. Um, so I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be shy or feel like you were let down by that being difficult. But for me, the, the fact of its difficulty is the fun. Yeah, it's, it, it, I mean, I definitely enjoyed being here. That's, that's for sure. I am very honored. I mm -hmm. did not think I would would get on the show. Ah, you're, you're humble, man, actually, but, but you're a great player. And you're an interesting guy. I actually, uh, the first video video I ever watched of you was a, sh uh, was a waiting on your past behavior. Oh, yeah? With who? And it, um, I 
it's it's really embarrassing, but I don't remember exactly the name. It was a, mm. a finance guy. Ah, RJ. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I think that was him. And you were critical of COVID. Of course, I was. And that was just such an alien opinion because I hadn't heard that before it, in my country, and or at least not from a reasonable person, you know. Ah, because I, I didn't say anything that w- that that struck you as obviously untrue or hyperbolic. I was just like, here's yeah, exactly. what makes sense. Here's what doesn't make sense. Why are we doing things that don't make sense? Yeah, I, I really liked seeing someone not be like uh, afraid to speak out their opinion and uh, not uh... Pete, you, you, you wouldn't kill me, Pete, alright? You wouldn't kill I me. Mean... No, you wouldn't. I mean... You would never. Parlocks. My, be- oh, my kill- old buddy, old pal. Fan. No. No way. Man. No, don't worry, don't worry. We're good. I, really, I shouldn't worry. Don't worry. I, if I were you, I wouldn't worry. I'm not. This is a really tense game. I know. Yes. You you called the settings, dude. I did, I did. And I really like them, but I, I think I might have been... You're going to try to hockey. commit them? Because you couldn't. You can't do that. It's impossible. You can't do it, man. Don't try. <laughs> I think you should kill Parlox personally. I, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, but it's too late. It's too late. That's mm. the thing. I, I've spent try. too much time talking and not enough time thinking, so. Well, I need to choose my wins however I can get them, so. I, I think I really got a good position in this game. Like, off the start, I got three corners, so I can't really be killed. Yeah, I love, I love the corners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Pink can try, but I don't think he will succeed. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous to think he can do it. Maybe kill Black. I don't know. I'm not looking into it deeply from Pink's perspective. I think Pink might be able to kill Black. Yeah, no, that's it's what, it's that's what I thought. It's yeah. difficult, but I think she uh, or he can. Yeah, watch. Like, but he's already wasted too much time, I think. Yeah. I'm gonna kill. You really black. need to think ahead in this game. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna kill black now. Nice. You can, okay. Yeah, you could probably do it. Do we see a sweep from Parlox? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh no. I don't want to see it. No. Bam. 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 Oh. That was. Oh. Oh. No. That was so close. Now I died. You laughed at me. You laughed at me when I missed the 99. I don't laugh at you. Oh, and she doesn't have a second. O-M-G. Ladies and gentlemen, would you look at that? That's beautiful. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, I get second? Or uh, maybe I get third. Oh, no. Pete, that's not fair. No, it's oh, not. I get third. Okay, okay. It's Don't not. do it. It's not fair at all. Don't do it, man. Actually, I think it's... You know, that, that promise that you would never kill me in a million years from that from that uh, classic field game, it still applies. Well, I mean, I, I actually don't think I should kill you, is more to the point, so... Awesome. Don't kill me, though. Don't try it. Stop it. No. Cool. Awesome. What, you just want me yeah, to get more, one more card and then you kill me next time? That's I, I, no, that doesn't sound like something I would do. Really? I wouldn't I farm you. Parallax, I wouldn't farm you from cards? What are you talking about? Okay, buddy. Bro. What? What? Would I do that to you? Yes. The Parallax? 
Yes, you would do that. I think that's something you would do. Mm. I don't know, man. You have such a low opinion of me. I know. <laughs> I think pink, pink uh, killed me. Yeah. I yeah, don't no. think that would be smart of him at all. Yeah, I think that would no, be a bad move. <laughs> yeah, he killed me though. He killed well, me. Well, then I win the game. Yeah. Excellent. I'll dab on that. Well. I mean, you know he could have gotten an instant set by killing me, right? No, I couldn't have. Why not? Didn't have the cards. You did! You had three, I had two, you got five. Oh yeah. You would have got an instant set. Which makes perfect sense. You just miscalculated. I mean, the sucking at risk, right? It, it comes up again and again. Yes, yes. Because, you know, it's just such a main part of your personality. It's a key, it's a key factor <laughs> of my risk game is that I suck at risk, so... Yes, yes, I agree. Oh, I get second. I'm surprised. Now, how do I split this? Is the question. Oh, the time's running. Oh, relax. It's almost over. Oh, I would, I would go far. Are you trying to? Are you trying to tilt me? I mean, I, I just want to make sure that you don't mess up the kill here. That would be a shame, huh? That would, that would be a shame, but... <laughs> Unfortunately... <laughs> I like the ball breaking. Well, GG, man. I'm, I'm happy with this show. I think, uh, you know, you can't, you can't always hit all the notes, but I hope you're happy with it. Yeah, I think I tried my best. I would have liked if I was able to talk about more things in like in a, a in a more eloquent manner but you know i i think i think i tried my best and i'm i'm fairly happy with what came out look think about it this way even for native speakers of english complicated talking about complicated things I'm grateful for your time i'm grateful to be your friend that you're around this community now i see um a great future for you. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for letting me be here. <laughs> ah, my pleasure. I Do was you glad to be featured as well? Thank you, Parlox, for the thank for the co-host and the assist. Yeah, of course. Hey, um, question: yeah, Is there anything you'd like to promote or uh, advertise before Not we end? really. Not really, to be honest. Not okay. really. Okay. I'm just a normal player. <laughs> yeah, just a normal. I also, normal I guy. also, I would like to say mm -hmm. that I think Parlox was really beneficial to the conversation. When I couldn't uh, continue, sometimes uh, he would give his opinion, and it was very, very good. I think Thank I, you. because I saw I, a I comment so somewhere on the on the video saying that Parlox is too intrusive, and I I don't think that was the case at all here. So. Just wanted to mention that. People misunderstand, I think. Parlox is, is a very misunderstood person. And, you know, I'm I'm a huge fan and he's a good friend of mine, so let the record show. I'm glad uh, I'm glad it was a fun one. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're interested in getting better at the game of risk, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and come along the ride with me. I have a daily release schedule. On YouTube, I stream on Twitch Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon Toronto time. If you are able to support me on Patreon and help me continue this work, I would be most grateful. Donations are always appreciated and never required. And if you are looking for notifications of when I go live on Twitch, sign up to the Discord, click that notification button, and you will be informed when I go live on stream. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much. And for all of you on the path to world domination, good games and good luck.